Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Uh, Elijah said in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, he said, How long will you waver between two opinions? And you know what I find out today? That there's a lot of folks who are trying to serve two masters and they waver between two opinions. One day they're over here and another day they're over here. Uh, but the, one of the uh, favorite expressions of the Apostle Paul we find in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 when he said, if any man, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And so this verse tells us that as Paul thought about uh, being uh, in Christ, it meant that the old had passed away. And so today, uh, if you'll turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2 for just a very few minutes, I want to talk to you on the subject of all in. All in. In fact, you're going to hear this expression, those two words a lot this summer. Uh, all in. What does it mean to be all in? Well, for Paul, it meant to be in Christ and everything else was left behind. And so it, that became the heartbeat of his life. And so in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul is passing that same thought along to others. And he says uh, in verse 1, he said, My son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, look, trust in him and not yourself. In fact, that word be strong in the in the original language means be strengthened or allow yourself to be strengthened. It's a passive voice. And so it's not something that you do more push-ups spiritually to get strong. It is that when you become more intimate with him, he strengthens you. And so I'm going to challenge you today and then this summer you're going to hear it a good bit about being all in, allowing God to do everything in his life, in your life, that, that he wants to do. And I'm going to ask you, so, ask you to ask yourself something. Am I all in? Am I all in? Am I allowing Christ to do everything in my life that he wants to do? Am I spending time with Him? Am I praying? Am I investing in His kingdom? Am I inviting others to come and join me? Am I all in? You know, because Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You strap on, if you strap on a fence, that's not going to work out too well. Elijah said, how long are you going to waver? And the word waver in the, is the NIV, but it means to limp along. Because when you try to do both, you're just limping along between two thoughts. Uh, and James said a double-minded man, somebody who's trying to think two different ways, is unstable in all his ways. In other words, you're not firm here and you're not firm there. You're never firm. And I want you to know if you want to be firm in life, you want to have a, a, a good, peaceful life, it's get all in for Jesus. All in Christ. And so Paul gives uh, a couple of pictures here. Actually, he gives five word pictures in this uh, Second Timothy chapter 2. And we're just going to hit a very fast of what it means to be all in. First of all, he said uh, it's the picture of a disciple. A disciple is a learner, a follower. And he tells us there in verse 2 that uh, uh, the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So what he's saying is a disciple develops disciples. He makes other disciples. 
And we do that by sharing. But we also do that by mentoring. It's a mentoring picture. Who are you influencing for Christ? Because if you're not influencing somebody, you're not all in. There ought to be somebody, at least one somebody, that you're really seeking to pour your life into. Christ's life through you. And I can't tell you how thankful I am for the people over the years who have invested in my life because they showed me what it meant to live a Christian life. They taught me about some things that I needed to know. Uh, they taught me about giving. They taught me about serving. They taught me about spending time in God's Word. They taught me about prayer. And uh, a, a disciple develops disciples. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I want, a, I want to be a fully devoted follower. I want to be a disciple who develops disciples. Be all in. The second picture he gives us here, he said verse 3 and 4, is the picture of a soldier. In verse 3 he says, uh, You therefore, my son, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in a warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. So to be a soldier, you've got to be devoted. He talks about our uh, being a woman in the military. You, you can't just halfway do it. You've got to be all in. Because if you're not all in, then you'll faint in time of hardship. And that's what happens to a lot of Christians. And so we need to be all in Christ today. So all in is a disciple. All in is a soldier. And in the third picture, uh, by the way, being a soldier means that you avoid distractions. That's what he says. He don't get entangled in this life. He avoids distractions. We need to be like ne Nehemiah of old who said, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. You know what? If you're not doing a great work, then what are you living for? We've got a great work to do. And you, I want you to know this church has a great work to do. I have a great work to do. I tell you, God got my attention when I got sick. Because I thought, you know what? I've got a lot more to do for the kingdom of God. I've got a lot more to do with my life. And so he got my attention. And I'm doing a great work. Amen. And I cannot come down. It means to be a soldier who doesn't get tangled up with the wrong things. Things that uh, keep you from serving successfully. Then the third word picture is that picture of an athlete. It's in verse 5. He says, uh, it also, if one competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rule. What he's saying is an athlete strives to succeed. You know what? What's the point if you're not going to be the best at what you do? That's what drove Rodney when he got into to, uh, martial arts. And he, he fought on all those championships. He won a lot of championships. He fought uh, overseas in London, I think. Birmingham. Pardon me? Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. Okay. Not Birmingham, Alabama. No. <laughs> okay. I don't want, I didn't think I had my story that all. But uh, to strive to succeed. And you gotta know the rules. You gotta you gotta work for something. You see, to be all in means you are striving and working. Sometimes it means knowledge, but it also means the physical part, because to know all the rules without the physical part, that just makes you a coach. That just makes you somebody on the sideline. But you know what? God does not want us to be on the sidelines. God made us to be in the game. Amen? Amen. And so he gives us the picture of being all in. Are you all in for the kingdom of God? Uh, Paul said uh, in Philippians chapter 3, in verse 13, I don't think I put this on the overhead. He, and this is from the Living Bible. Y'all forgive me if, you, if that offends you. But, but he said, I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. 
I'm putting all my energies into this one thing. Forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. He goes on to say, I press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, I want you to know Jesus sets a high standard for us. And he wants us to become like him. And I'm pressing towards that. I'm not just casually taking a walk, hoping to get there one day. Friend, I want you to know there's room, no room in the kingdom of God for casual Christians. There's no room for us who, who just want to take it easy and think it's going to be okay. Hey, we've got to strive. We've got to work. And we've got to, to go after it. As an athlete. Bringing all your energies to bear for this one thing. Well, then the fourth word picture is the picture of a farmer. Look at verse 6. He says, the hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. This tells us the very essence of why a man plants a crop. He wants to eat. He wants his family to be able to eat. So a farmer, he farms for himself and he farms for others because it's his livelihood. And you know what the thing about a farmer is he's always sowing for the future. Because before he plants the crop, when during the winter months, he's thinking about getting the getting the fields ready. As soon as spring begins to break, he's out there getting the fields ready. And 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 once he gets the fields ready, he's ready to get the seed in the ground. And once he gets the seed in the ground, he's making sure that the weeds don't overtake it and that everything's going to be good because he's why he's thinking about the future because what good is all of that if there's no harvest? If there's no crop that comes in? And I want you to know, he's watching the weather, and he's praying that God sends the rain, and he's praying and, 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 and working for the future. And once he starts getting the crop in, well, guess what he's thinking about? He's thinking about next year. He's thinking about feeding his family and the things he can do, getting that, getting that corn to market, getting those produces to market so he can get some cash and feed his family on, uh, uh, get some other supplies for him. So there's the picture of a farmer. A farmer is all in. He's all in. And then verse 15 gives us the last picture. It's the picture of a worker. Someone who improves their skills for approval. He says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And again, this reminds us that there's a, there's a future reward here. We're going to stand before God one day and we're going to be judged. Were we all in for the word of God? Did we prepare ourselves? You know what? Are we improving like a... I think about a bricklayer and, and uh, Jason lays lay some brick and block and rock and all that stuff and and uh, you know he didn't just go out there and become a master at it right away he didn't pick up a trial and say boy that's the easiest thing i ever done no he, he had to hey i'd say probably the first thing he does is he carries a lot of block for somebody else <laughs> carries a lot of block for somebody else and and he watched the way they did it he learned how to mix the mud he learned how to get that archie you did this kind of work Learn how to get all that stuff together uh, so that so that the cement would set up right. And he watched them as they would do their grout lines. And then they began to do it themselves. And they'd improve, and they'd improve. And then before too long, they'd get to where they, they... And they're just moving, building a wall like that. Well, it takes me a, a month to try to build a little block wall. Well, they, uh, Jason or, or uh, Archie could do it in a few minutes because they know what they're doing. They have improved their skills for approval. By the way, because when you're working for somebody else, when you're doing it for somebody else, you're building for somebody else. <laughs> they're not going to pay you if you build something shabby. 
We stop going to stand up. A worker who need not be ashamed. I like the way Jason takes a picture of some of his work. He, he took a picture when he was working over at uh, CV Church of God where he laid those rocks and put on those columns. I thought, man, that looks good. He wasn't ashamed of that work. He could be proud of the work. Same thing with uh, uh, Steve in, in the sheetrock, what he does. You know what? We need to be workers with the Word of God who are not ashamed. We need to be all in, not unstable in all our ways. And so I want to challenge you today to be all in for Jesus, to be all in Christ. And, and I want to do that, uh, sum it up with four personal commitments that I want to put before you here. I think they're going to be on the screen. To be all in. Now, I really want you to focus on this during the summer months. Because if you're focused on it over the next four months, then it'll be yours for the next year. Because you don't have to do something for 60, uh, 90 days without it really becoming a part of your life. See, a lot of people, they'll, they'll do something for a week or two. Maybe three. But you know what? It takes a long time to change our inner habits. It takes a long time to change the way we think. And so, here's my challenge to you personally to apply this passage of Scripture today, what I'm saying. First of all, be all in by instilling God's principles in your life day. That means every day sit down with God's Word and say, God, speak to me today. And, and, and show me what it means to be a father. Oh, we're going to learn today from the Word. Instill God's principles daily. Friend, I want you to know this book is a living book and it is, will talk with you and it's alive and it's with principles that God has laid in here and they work for your life. I'm telling you. They'll tell you how to manage your money. They'll tell you how to treat people. They'll tell you how to Get along with it. Uh, it's all in here. It, it is applicable for every situation in your life. Instill God's principles. Now, you might not get uh, all those principles in one day. That's why you got to do it a little bit every day. Instill God's principles daily. Number two, intently pray daily. Intently pray daily. What should we pray for? Pray for your personal needs. Pray for yourself. Did you know it's okay to pray for yourself? Amen. I need help. I'm God. I, I like this, and I know your will is this. God, I struggle to be a giver. And I know you want me to give. God, help me to learn how to be a giver. Those are good prayers. Pray for yourself. Pray for your daily needs. Pray for your uh, burdens. People you love. But also, can I challenge you to, to pray for your church daily? Pray that God's hand will be on your pastor. Pray that God would move through your church. Pray that God would send an old-fashioned, uh, heaven-sent revival that just shakes this church and causes us to bring these people in, not by onesies and twosies, but by tens and twenties. Do you know, do y'all believe that God can send people by tens and twenties? Oh, yeah. He can. He can do it. And they, may be, they may think they're coming as a one or Tuesday, but, but I want you to know, when you bring in a one or Tuesday, there's some family members. There's some people around. And so pray for your church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your Sunday school teacher. Pray. Ooh. Pray yes. for your Sunday school teacher. Do I have to pray for him? Or... Well, it wouldn't hurt. Or hurt. By the way, if you're going to pray for him, you might ought to be here to support him. Amen, brother. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what, what it looks like to be all in. Amen. That's my challenge to you. Number three, invest your resources regularly. Invest your resources regularly. 
and resources means your time. Some of you get a lot of time. During the week, we've had some guys working a lot lately on Saturdays getting these mobile units ready behind us. Invest your time. Invest your talents. What you can do. You say, well, I can't do anything. You'd be surprised what you do at home will work at the church. Hmm. Unless it's sitting around eating bonbons and that's your talent, then that's not going to help you. I used to work for a, a man who said, you know what, we don't need any steak eaters or bus riders. We need some people who are getting out there doing it. I thought, that's pretty good. Steak eaters and bus riders, that, what, that was an expression that goes back to uh, uh, football days where you have a, uh, now they not have a meal before they go on a long trip. They eat steak and then they go on a long trip. We don't need any steak eaters or bus drivers. Hey, you know what? If you'll just come, God will give you the desire to invest the talent that you've got. And then it also means to invest your treasure into the kingdom of God. Be a regular giver. I'm telling you, God will open up the windows of heaven and He'll bless your life. He'll change your life. He will meet all your needs. He can do more with the 90% uh, that you that's left behind than you could ever do with the 100. <coughs> By the way, if you're waiting on getting a lot of money to give, if you won't give a dollar out of 10, you won't give 10 out of 20. If you won't give 100 out of 1,000, you won't give 1,000 out of 10,000. And you won't give, uh, uh, what is that, uh, 10000 out of 100000 So if you're waiting on 100000 you wait to hit the lottery to give, you're going to be waiting. Y'all all right? Invest your resources. That's my challenge to you. By the way, don't take your time on vacation. If you go on vacation, you're not here time. You better, you better put it in the offering the next week when you get back. Amen. Don't spend those time. Put it in there before you go. Put it in there before you go. Live by faith. I know people that do that. Yeah, so, so invest your time in accounts. We're going to take vacations this summer. Mm -hmm. You're probably everybody here is going to take some time off. Nothing wrong with that, but when you take time off, you know what you ought to do? Don't take a month off. You're gone one weekend. Don't take it, don't make it two weekends or three or four before you get back. Then you know what's gonna happen if you do that? Then you're gonna go, I don't know what's going on, church. I never know what's going on. But if you're here every week, you can know what's going on. You might miss one, I'm gonna miss one, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss some miss something. Nothing wrong with that. I gotta lose, I gotta finish. Number four, fourth challenge. This is it, we're done. Invite others to church regularly. Amen. Hey, if what you're coming for isn't good enough to invite somebody, you ought to get someplace where it's good enough to invite somebody. Amen. Now, I'm not asking y'all to leave. I'm just saying, if you believe in it, don't you think somebody else would too? Don't you think it would help somebody? If you get encouraged, don't you think somebody else could be encouraged? If you grow in Christ, don't you think somebody else could? You see, God wants us to be real and He wants us to tell others about His work in our life. So there you have it.